Hey everyone, today we're going to look at building a diorama using Airfix's 172nd JU-87B Stulka dive bomber. The Junkers JU-87, or as it was better known, Stulka, was a mid-1930s close air support dive bomber. It became a symbol of Nazi propaganda with the addition of ram air sirens, also known as Jericho trumpets. The sounds of those trumpets can still be heard today in any movie with a diving or crashing airplane in the movies. The build starts with the cockpit, as usual, and this is a newer kit from Airfix and one of my all-time favorite World War II aircrafts, so I wanted to highlight some of the upgrades. Like molded-in seatbelts for the seats to use with the pilot and the radio man. The individually molded side panels for the interior details. The floor is attached to the center line of the underbody. After painting up all the interior bits, it was time to close it all up. But this is where Airfix's new models and I parted ways. The instructions tell you to assemble the fuselage and then add the bottom plate. This is a terrible mistake. It won't fit properly because there's a hinge point on the front of the bottom plate. So I added it to the port side first then I added the other side before closing the fuselage completely up. Another point of contention is having to drill the holes for the wing bomb hard points. I'm not sure why I have to do this. Whether you add the smaller munitions or not, the hard points will be there on this early warbird. The engine cowling still bothers me. Airfix seems to like to make a simple part as complex as possible. And I would be okay with the complexity if there was an option for opening bits to expose an engine. But that's not an option for this kit. In fact, there really is no engine to build for the kit. The bottom plate makes up the first part of the iconic gull wing design, with the outer portions of the wings having a top and a bottom like traditional model kits. As with the fuselage, I used a lot of spring-style clothespins to keep the parts together while the blue cured. The fit of the wings was very good, with only a little bit of putty in the typical wing root gaps. On the tail structure, I will say the struts that connect the horizontal stabilizers with the fuselage were just a little bit fiddly, but I think that's more a function of scale than choice. And luckily, Airfix chose to model them combined instead of two small parts. At this scale, it would have been a nightmare. Also, the rudder is a separate part, which helps with details. But Airfix again really made the shark snarl way too difficult. It should have been split into a top and lower decal for the sides, and I'm not sure why they split the front part into four pieces. I also chose to use the early war Jericho sirens, or trumpets, over the other part that's supplied. The landing gear on this plane are fixed with spats and come in six separate parts. And since the wheels are mostly inside the spats, Airfix gives you the weighted wheel look or an in-flight look by simply choosing how to rotate the wheel within the landing housing. I chose an on-the-ground look because I rarely model airplanes in flight. Die brakes are the last of the general build before painting. Again, the instructions will leave you wanting as to which parts of the brakes go into which mounting spots but with tons of dry fitting, you will eventually find what works and goes where. The painting started with an overall black primer, over which I put a 657071 RLM early war color scheme, starting with the light blue-gray RLM 65 or Hellblau. And once that was completely dry, I taped it off so that the top colors wouldn't bleed onto the bottom of the airplane. I also tried to add chipping to the walkways but I ended up with cracked paint uh, before I could chip. I think I just went a little too heavy on the hairspray. After sanding that section and hitting it with a quick coat of matte varnish, I resprayed the RLM 71. After another overnight dry and cure, I taped off the lighter colored splinter camo and oversprayed the RLM 70 green black. My favorite part of every paint job is the masking removal. As I see the colors pop, and it's a very, always a very pleasant surprise. And, I, and German splinter camo is, is just one of those patterns that I, I really enjoy painting. This plane was in service from the Spanish Civil War through the end of World War II. 
even though it was completely outclassed by every other warplane by the end of 1940. The letter identification decals were problematic as well, with the letters being very thin and not connected by film. This can cause rips and folds. I lost some of the K on the lower decal and the entire VK lettering for the starboard fuselage identifiers just wrapped around itself as I was trying to lay it on and ended up ripping and tearing and was completely unusable. Weathering was my usual mix of brown panel liner on the underside, black panel liner on the top side, and pastel powders for ammo and exhaust staining. Just remember that when you're wiping everything off, go with the direction of airflow. Now for this plane, I also added some white pastel powder to the top side, all over it, and then brushed it off. I just wanted to give the camo paint a bit of that sun faded look you see in some of the old newsreels. Canopies and other clear parts were added last using a basic white PVA glue to bond them to each other and to the plane. The diorama base was dead simple. I started with a craft store purchased round wooden plaque to which I added small bits of insulation foam to remove the flatness. And then that whole thing was covered with a very light layer of drywall compound. This allowed me to come back in the morning and sandpaper everything into smoother transitions and use rattle cam primers to get the primer down on the, such a large surface. So I also had an old 172nd scale Luftwaffe rearm ground crew from Zedvia, a Ukrainian company, I believe. They've been sitting around painted up for a very long time just looking for a diorama to fit into. I wanted to place the Stuka in an unimproved airfield near the front lines where these close air support dive bombers would operate. So I started with some seven millimeter green static grass on the hills, a uh, few and a few of the low spots and worked my way down to two millimeter in various shades of green and finally just covering everything else with a burnt grass and green flock grass flocking, giving the taller grass some body and the low areas a dead kind of grassy look. For this build, I want an early war machine and Airfix had just come out with this new modeling. I'm fairly happy with the model as finished, but once my current cache of Airfix kits are built and done, I don't know if I'll be going back to Airfix unless it's a odd model I can't find anywhere else. At this point, I prefer to either buy someone else's new kits, they go together much better, or grab an older vintage kit and live with the lack of details. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this diorama build. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you happy hobbying.